Hey guys, my name's Cadroth, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Elizabeth Bathory Cinderella, aka Cinderelli. She's going to be our newest welfare coming to us here with the new Halloween event, and she is actually probably the best of our Elizabeths that we've seen so far. And the reason being is because she's actually quite capable as a single target writer. Nowadays, you'll hear a lot of people clamoring to have someone like Kentucky Ryder come back in the Evocation Festival. But the reality is that, again, Cinderella has managed to actually be a bit of a stopgap for that. And the reason for that is because she is a very capable single target writer. She deals a decent chunk of damage and she has charge to sort of automate the process if you have the right sports. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking to you guys about how to properly use her. But again, as long as you guys complete the event, you will get her for free. And even if you manage to miss this event, while well, to date it has not had a rerun, you can at least look forward to the fact that this will probably eventually be a unit that will come back with the Evocation Festival. So don't worry about it too much, but definitely try to min-max this event. Try to get as much as you can because there's some really good welfares available and welfare craft essences. Don't want to miss out on them. So anyways, starting off right here at the beginning, we can see that Cinderella's stat here is going to be 9k on her attack. That's not too shabby there at 9.1. Uh, certainly it could be a little bit better, but again, I'm of the opinion that as long as the unit is in that 9k range, it's pretty good for a 4 star. Uh, she does only manage to have 11k HP, so not too much of an offset there, unfortunately. But you'll kind of see why they kind of want her to be a little bit anemic, and honestly, it makes sense. Don't worry about it too much. Cinderella actually has quite a bit of good things in her kit to help her out. She does have 205 star absorption, which is above the normal 200 for writers, and that is definitely a good thing to have. Writers have the highest in the game for star absorption. And she also has 9.1 star generation rate here, so she won't be the world's worst star generator for you. Her NP gain rate is actually 0.87. This is fairly high, and especially as you start to go through the, uh, the kit here, you're going to see that this is actually going to get even more skewed. And then she does have 3% uh, NP charge defense, which is the amount that she gets hit per attack per hit of the enemy. And then again, this is going to be a 35% death rate here. This is a little bit on the higher end, certainly something you're going to be concerned about, especially given the fact that her foil will be assassins. Definitely don't take her up against assassins, as especially if they manage to have death rate, that's not going to be a good combination for her. Uh, she is Chaotic Balanced, which Chaotic is certainly a relatively explainable one, but Balanced is a fairly rare alignment. She is female gendered and does have uh, Dragon Trait, Fairy Tale Servant, Hominidae Servant, Humanoid, Riding, Normal Servant, Seven Knight Servant, and Weak to Anima Elish. And we will come back to talk about that here in a minute. As you guys can see here, her overarching... Uh, deck is going to be 2B2A, which is good in my opinion. Uh, they've minimalized the quick card down to just the one, but it is a four hit quick, so definitely good on the hit counts there. And again, as we denoted, she does have writing and is a writer, so you could kind of expect that the quick card performance would be good. In that regard, it may have been better for them to actually give her a second quick card, but honestly, given the fact she is a buster unit, double buster cards allows her to form a triple buster brave chain with her NP. Double Arts cards just means she gets to take advantage of that really solid NP gain rate. Unfortunately, though, the Arts card is only to hit, so that is going to sort of hamper it a little bit in terms of its performance. Otherwise, everything else here is average with the exception, uh, other than that being the extra attack being one hit below average. But otherwise, again, still a perfectly adequate deck. As we can see here, her first skill already just starts off, uh, if we were to compare her to Ryder Kentoki, by having hard survivability. Something that Ryder Kentoki just lacks and is honestly kind of one of his biggest glaring issues. Is that if you have to go the distance with Ryder Kentoki, you have to find a way to keep him alive. In her case, she has three attacks, three turns, self invincibility, so... Definitely a nice duration there. If she's not getting focused, this does mean that you could have this for multiple turns. So it is a nice thing to have. But it's also going to increase her NP generation rate for three turns by 30% on a five-turn cooldown. 
that's not bad at all, especially since we already denoted the fact that she has a high MP gain rate naturally and does have two arts cards. So her card performance actually won't be that bad. She will have some decent opportunities to actually be able to card her way back to full. Unfortunately, she does gain a demerit here, which is that she has a 500% chance to, to grant herself poison with 500 damage for three turns. However, if you're in peeing that turn, you don't care. And I'll explain why here in a second. Her second skill here is going to increase her own buster performance for three turns by 30%. Again, your standard 30% three turn type of steroid. So definitely a good one there. And increases her own damage against wild beast enemies for three turns, giving her a nice 50% power mod against a wild beast enemy. Now, keep in mind, wild beast enemies are a little bit more restrictive as to what they uh, kind of work against but certainly not going to be uh, that bad of a niche to have, especially if you're going up against a non-servant enemy, as those typically will be your wild beasts. And again, though, you can see they sort of uh, dogpile her with yet another demerit here, with a chance to reduce her own defense by 10% for three turns. Again, if you're in peeing that turn that you pop this skill, you don't care. All of this also on a five-turn cooldown, and the reason that this is somewhat important is these cooldowns are relatively low in Cinderella's kit, and that is really good, especially when you start considering uses within the Kayan Skya system where you have cooldown reduction. And then her third skill here is going to gain her critical stars up to 30. So that is a huge star bomb. It's also going to charge her NP gauge by 30% for one turn, but then it has a chance to seal her own skills for one turn. So in a scenario where you're kind of utilizing your skills in a Koyan Sky setup, just go down the line, do skill one, skill two, and skill three in the order that you're going to pop them in. Definitely make sure you activate this one last. Otherwise, you're not going to be activating any other skills this turn. So that's the only real trick to using Cinderella is just make sure that you use the third skill last. However, this is probably going to be the skill you want to lore first. So in terms of an actual skill order and what you would go with, I would probably go with uh, basically three, two, one, kind of go in the opposite order of, of what you would press the skills in, in terms of actual importance there, because three is going to be your charge skill. It's going to enable strategies. Two is going to be your steroid. That's going to get you more damage. And one is going to be survivability, which totally up to you. You may want to prioritize that depending on the situations that you're in, but I would say that, again, I usually go with charge first. Um, again, the other thing to point out here is that she has a four-turn cooldown on this, so let's talk cooldown management a little bit here. So the first skill was five, the second skill was five, and the third skill was four. None of her skills are even six-turn cooldowns, which that means, again, in the Koyan Sky setup when you're using two of them, this usually means that, at least with a five-turn skill, that we can pop them on back-to-back -back turns. That's really nice, because that means you can pop a skill on turn one and have it back again already on turn two, allowing you to effectively double up on something like, say, your steroid here for three turns. Really, really nice to be able to front-load that, because that means your damage will ramp early rather than later and stay high as you need it. Also here with the third skill, the fact this is a four turn cooldowns, not that big of an issue, but this does mean you might be able to get rid of a Koyanskaya in the sense that you might be able to fit in another support. And why is that important? Well, it wouldn't be good for your second skill in the steroid here, but in terms of just making the unit three turn, you could actually manage to pull this off with instead of a double Koyanskaya Oberon setup like would be optimal, you might be able to do it with a Koyan Skya of your own, maybe an Oberon of your own, and then maybe any third support that gives 50% charge. So this could be really useful to you as if you manage to have the other 50% support, you might be able to substitute one of these two and get them from your friends list supports rather than instead having to have them yourself. That's going to open things up for you and allow you to actually be able to three turn with her. So I did feel that it was important to bring that up because otherwise the four turn cooldown doesn't actually matter. It's not that big of a deal to sit there and go like, oh, well, you know, I, I can't manage to get this done. 
Instead, you just might be able to just go ahead and do this because you could pop this skill on turn one. And then basically, if you're looking at popping it on turn three as well, really the only thing you need is two 50% chargers at that point with some kind of cooldown reduction. You only need basically the one turn in order to get it back. And that would kind of get you there. So I don't think it's that crazy of an idea to sit there and say like, hey, you know, try to mix and match your supports and try to get done what you can. But still not too bad to have such a low cooldown on a skill. Just remember, be careful of the Numeric. And with her passive, she doesn't have much of anything, just writing. But it's a nice writing one. It's writing EX for 12% extra uh, quick up. Again, don't think too much about the lore aspect of that. Just consider the fact that she only has the one quick card and it is a four hit. So quick card will actually perform quite well for what it is. With her, I highly recommend going with mana loading as your first append. This is absolutely going to be something you will want to do, as again, we already denoted the fact that she is a 30% charger. Trying to operate her in a sort of Koyanskaya or slash Oberon type setup means that you kind of can end up going for something like 30% charge there with a maxed rank mana loading. That's going to get you some real work to be done there. And I don't think you have to worry too much about this. But I do think this is a really, really uh, easy way to kind of kick off things with her and sort of start her with a 50% charge CE and allow her to be able to three turn with quite a bit of firepower. Now, again, I do think in that regard that maxing the mana loading is going to be important. Just remember that if you get her in the event, you get the coins in the event. So you don't have to worry too much about how to spend this stuff. But I will say I would go with the extra attack finesse from there. That's going to be your better choice as this will help out that sort of four hit extra attack be a little bit better. And low key, kind of think that's why they made it four hit. They knew they were giving you the coins. But again, uh, with regards to that, I think that's what I would do because the, uh, the third append here being anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude, well, a rare append is not really that useful to her unless they happen to be wild beast, which as far as I know, I don't think there is any overlap there, but maybe there's one I'm not thinking of. But again, I would say this is the odd man out. This is the append you need the least, so save it for last. With regards to her NP, it is a four hit single target buster NP. So kind of means we don't really care too much about the four hits, but again, it should be a good damage dealing NP for you. However, remember all those demerits that she had in her kit. You don't care about them because as long as you're chaining the NPs over and over and over again with her, you're gonna end up getting this over and over and over again to be cleansed. And so as a result, even if you're spamming skills in the Koyan Skaya setup, you're still just going to be able to actually pop off with this, and it is going to be quite nice for you. Uh, from there, it's going to deal damage to one enemy, and then her overcharge effect is that it will increase the attack of fairy tale allies for three turns, activating first by 20%. So it's an extra 20% attack up for any other unit in the party that is fairy tale. Not bad, especially considering this can stack. What this means for Cinderella though is that this stacks for her. She gets this over and over and over again, basically meaning that when she NPs the third time in a three turn sequence, she has 60% attack up from this. And the reason for why is because she herself is a fairy tale servant. So this will buff her and will allow you to actually be able to hit even harder with her. Like I said, this is why her demerits don't matter. Her, uh, you know, overcharge effect here is really good. Her skill cooldowns are really low. She's actually a really good survivable servant for a lot of things. Now, with regards to what craft essence you're going to want to use on her, obviously you have some old school stuff, which again, something like Holy Night Supper here, if they ever end up bringing it back, hey, there you go. That would be a great option for her. But I'm going to say most of you guys should have some more recent acquisitions, including from this very Halloween event, you should be able to get Aerial Drive here. This one's also another welfare. It's all attack scaling. 
Starting battle at 50% gauge, NP damage up by 10% and buster performance by 10%. Amazing CE, it'll work great on her. Highly recommend you make sure to MLB this and get it out of the shop. But it doesn't stop there because next year for our collab event in the early half of the year, you're going to end up getting another CE from the Bunyan event and that's going to be cranking. And cranking is aerial drive cranked up a notch. It's all attack scaling, 50% starting charge, just like that. And what it does is it trades basically 2% buster performance for 5% NP damage. Definitely a good trade right there, especially if you're using Oberon, as Oberon's going to be able to double that amount of NP damage with his third skill. So it goes from being 5% extra to basically 10% extra at that point. Definitely a nice thing to have. So... Cranking is going to be what sets your eyes on in the future for her. And then again, if you manage to get her in a two turn sequence, you can actually use Black Grail. And this is something that can be done with her since all of her cooldowns are so low, you have no issue actually being able to get back to everything fast enough. So yeah, I can mention Black Grail, even though normally in a three turn cadence, she can't start with it. Still, though, definitely a decent option for damage, given the fact that it is our game's most powerful damage CE. Now, with regards to the actual damage list, let's go ahead and talk about this. Remember, this list should not be treated as gospel. It is neutral numbers, kind of in a vacuum. So don't think too much about this, because all this gets skewed since it doesn't include stuff like support buffs or, again, uh, effective damage on a target or anything like that. But the thing to keep in mind here is we do have some relative monsters here with Ozzy up here at five, uh, sorry, 57K at this point. Uh, you have Made Alter, who actually a lot of people sort of disrespect that I have a issue with because you can do Reloaded on her fairly easily to actually get her up to some pretty insane numbers. And then you have Mabe, same thing here, where while a lot of people will view her as super clunky, her male niche is not to be denied. But from there, I'm going to say uh, there is some fall off. However, the thing about this is, remember, Cinderella is a welfare. You're guaranteed five copies. And you can see she's in good company right there, right next to Kentucky. So as you guys begin to look at this, we can definitely look towards NP5 and see that these two units are basically neck and neck. Your bottom one here is Cinderella. Your top one here is uh kentoki so like i said don't write her off just because she's not kentoki she's actually a very good unit for you and while a lot of people will sit there and say like oh well you know we have ushi sitting up here at 56 ushi's gotten a whole ton of upgrades to kind of get her to that point and ushi does struggle to actually fire off multiple mps in a row so to me this is something where i can definitely say hey look this is a very quality unit for you, and we did not even really go into the fact that she can also be Wild Beast up here with basically up to 82k neutral damage if that manages to come into play. So certainly, again, Liz Cinderella, if you will, is a very good, capable unit. Like I said, don't skimp on her. Don't skimp on this event. Make sure you guys get everything out of this event because it's super lucrative especially for you new players or you returning players that maybe didn't get everything the last time one of those events was active so definitely make the most out of this event and again let me know what you guys think about cinderella and uh how you guys feel she stacks up against the other ellies or maybe even the other single target writers be curious to hear you guys thoughts and i will see you guys for roles tonight have a good one